Hi, I'm Rob from Hobson. Thanks for joining me live on location at um, the Salt Beer Factory, which is one of my local breweries. It's in Salt Air, West Yorkshire. Um, this is my hungover face, and it looks kind of like I'm in camouflage at the moment, surrounded by stainless steel and a, and a grey jumper and um, grey hair. So anyway, beer I've got is... First one, to get rid of this hangover. It's called Calico. It's a, a 4% ABV session pale ale. Uh, had it once before, um, but yeah. Let's, um, so as far as the colour goes, I mean, it's, it's kind of that pale, it looks like lemon juice in a way, kind of slightly darker than lemon juice, and um, quite hazy, quite hazy, pure, pure white hair, I mean, this is keg, anyway, aroma. I, I get elderflower, that's a, m quite a prominent aroma for me. Yeah, kind of lemon, grapefruit, flesh. Not a hell of a lot more. I mean, it's, it's not the easiest thing to... I mean, pineapple, actually. Pineapple chunks. No, it's actually, there's pineapple boiled sweets. Shouldn't be banging on the table. But I'm not an amateur of this um, whole <laughs> recording and location thing. But yeah, there's, there's pineapple cube sweets, if you, you know those. There's probably quite a British thing. But I'm quite surprised if you're watching this video if you're from America. <laughs> anyway, let's dive in. I'm absolutely spitting feathers. Cheers. Yeah. It's really kind of easy going. I said, I, I can't get past that kind of elderflower thing myself. Elderflower. Kind of watery orange. Slightly floral, I guess I'm saying, with that elderflower thing. But it's got that sweetness, and um, if you're in the UK once again, it's a refresher sweet, so there's little kind of like hads, candy sweets. Flavour wise, it kind of seems quite, um, takes me back to kind of a lot of hot profiles you get from um, breweries in America. In, um, if you go back kind of like 10 years, so I don't know what's in this. I'm probably setting myself up because it's a bit like mosaic and, um, and citrus for me. It's screaming out something a bit more like Amarillo or um, it's Cascade, that kind of thing. Anyway, it's lovely stuff and a perfect one to start off with to yeah, shake off this hangover and show you um, one of my local breweries. Anyway, see you in a minute. Cheers. Right, so the next beer I've got is called Huckabout, which they call it in the New England IPA. It's 5.5. Personally, I'd say it's more of a pale ale. Um, a beer that I've been doing a pretty long time, to be honest. Um, it was a beer that was originally brewed by James Campbell, former head brewer at Cloudwater, when he first started working for um, the as, was it, SSV, which is the company that built the, the brew house here at um, Salt Beer Factory. Obviously, current head brewer, Colin Strong, but a lot of people know, I guess, Colin was most prominent at uh, Buxton. Anyway, so um, so this would be that I think James originally came up with. So, aroma. Oh, that's lovely. A lot of mango. Mango pineapple. It's a problem with these full glasses. <laughs> he gets to snort some beer anyway. I'm going to drink some, I'll come back to the aroma. Yeah, a little bit more bite, a little bit more, you can hear the, the, the um, fermenting vessels kind of like um, off, off gas, it's not off gassing is it, essentially it's the um, CO2 escaping from the, the pressure valves in it and stuff, it's not my chronic flatulence, um, but flavour wise yeah, kind of pine, mango, grapefruit, grapefruit without a doubt. But you don't get too, you don't get too sweet. It stays nice, nice and balanced. And um, what else besides that, really? There's, there's a hinting towards kind of a certain level of dankness. But I think it's cracker. I think mean, I think it's become a beer that people can really rely on from this brewery. And um, yeah, it's an absolute, it's a cracker. I mean, 5.5, steady Sunday afternoon session. Um, so, so, how is this going to go then? Stay tuned for the last review and see how, <laughs> see how lucid I am by then. One thing I want to say before I sign off from this little review is that um, the last one, Calico, it turns out it's a gluten-free beer. Anyway, so that's Hookback, Hookaback, here at Salt Beer Factory. Lovely stuff. See you in a minute. So the next one I've got is a half of um, the MC Hellas. 
5.2% ABV, Helles Lager. Um, I mean, I'm not just going to sit here off afternoon and drink pale ale. Hang on, that's what I always do. Anyway, <laughs> so well, yeah, I've not had this. I think I, I think these guys make really good lagers. Um, they've got this great kit um, which allows them to properly lager um, lager beers. So I mean, they, they have two kind of like the, well, the, the tank beers, but I don't know if they're using the tanks at the moment. Um, kind of serving tanks, um, but they, they always have a, a the hex lager and, and a session pale called Duke. Um, but I think they do um, some really good lagers. Colin's got a real kind of like, well, he's a great brewer, and also he's got a real kind of affinity for kind of um, for, for lager as well. So I really trust that he can do a really good job of it. And also, you know what? Uh, my mate Peter came came over, and he really liked the lagers, and that's somebody who's. Who I really respect's opinion uh, as far as lagers go. Anyway, so yes, MC Lager or Mc, what do you Mc, sorry, M MC Hellas or Mc Hellas, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink these because it's fucking impossible to get any aroma out of it when you've got no headroom. I know I forgot on the last one, so don't pull me up on that, Mr. Fucking Chippy Comment. <laughs> Spot on. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, so you're getting that, you are getting that kind of, kind of cream corn kind of edge, which you kind of expect. It's not DMS. Yeah, you're getting that kind of lag lager malt character. I'm presuming just a lovely softness of, um, of malt, kind of Jacob's cream cracker. A little prickle of kind of noble hops. I mean, it's the Hellas. I presume he's going to go quite um, um, quite traditional on this. It does have that kind of slight nettle edge to it. It's got a hint of kind of fresh ginger knocking around in there. A bit of toffee, a bit of toasted marshmallow. I mean, I'd, I'd be happy with a bit, a little bit more business myself. I mean. If you're going to be kind of true to style, I'd always say uh, Hellas does have a little bit more bite than this. It's quite soft, low ABV, but I mean, people these days, they don't want bitterness, do they? <laughs> so, um, but very approachable. I mean, the average kind of lager drinker that comes would come in here, because it is very kind of like a broad place. I mean, it's the kind of place that anybody could come. It's, it's, it, I mean, I think um, people like me who's, who's into the beer, can, obviously have got a lot of lovely things to enjoy, but I think it's the, the, the make very approachable beers, and I think they're very conscious that it's, it can't be just rack full of Imperial Stouts and um, double IPAs. It's got to have a lot of lower ABV stuff, sessionable stuff, stuff what people are going to come and have multiple pints of, stuff what people are going to have with their Sunday dinner. So I'm here on a Sunday, a lot of people next door, the, which, uh, which used to call the hop. Um, as um, as a brewery is owned by Osset Brewery, which is a kind of a very established brewery, I guess, what known for Cascale in the West Yorkshire area in particular. Own a number of pubs and pubs, but, but this is a, a venture by the, the people over at um, Osset. Mm. But yeah, that's spot on. Absolutely crushable. Hate that term. Hate myself for saying that, but it is what it is. That's just me. Anyway, see you in a minute. And that is um, the MC Hellas 5.2. From here at Salt Bay Factory. Right, so next one I've got is, um, it's called Tram Shed, which is a IPA brooding collaboration with um, Trag from Manchester, 7% ABV. Uh, had this initially at the Salt's um, first beer festival, which is called Oktoberfest, which is all beers of German kind of um, influence. Clearly this is not a German influence, but it's a really nice, IPA. So, there you go. That's what it looks like. Okay, it's that kind of like sandy orange colour. Um, pure white foam on top. So, I know I forgot about the aroma last time as well, so just, just deal with it. Alright. <laughs> anyway, cheers. We're going off beast. First thing that hits me, resin, dang. Um, sorry, just putting the wallet away. Just that, I'm just so cash. <laughs> a bit of kind of toasted uh, brown bread. There's a there's a bit more kind of kind of there's a glutinous quality to it. I guess it's um, kind of it's 
got a bit of kind of prominence to the um, to the body on this one. Great fruit, once again. A little bit of kind of like a lot, of, a lot more pith on this one. Lemon lime and then orange pith. I mean, there's no really distinguishable kind of bitterness, but it's definitely got a little bit of um, little something that keeps it balanced. Yeah, slight kind of peppery note, white pepper. Waffles, I'm oddly, <laughs> comes to mind. I'm thinking salt, waffles, grapefruit, peach. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, waffles. Belgian, if we're being specific. Um, but that's lovely, it's a cracking beer. Um, there will be, um, if, if I haven't already seen it, um, a, uh, a review of this as can, which they kindly um, sent us. Please do check out uh, the um, uh, edition of uh, Good Beer Live, the live broadcast that me, Jake, and Craig do. We covered this and Bowline, which you will see shortly, which is a great beer as well. So yeah, so um, tram shed, which is because the, um, the the building that we're in used to be the old, the, used to be the tram shed for the for the tram line, which connected uh, I guess Saltair and Shipley. Um, this is the, as I said, this is tram shed. The pub used to be called the tram shed once upon a time, which is the front end of this building, where we are now for a long time. It's like a kids soft play thing called Jimmy G's. It's a little bit of local salt air, <laughs> salt air history for you, um, but um, but yeah. So that's so that's I guess that's the reason why it's called that. But the other end of the the line is oddly salt air brewery, which was the power station for the salt, for the tram line. So there you go. There's a little bit of a little nugget of information for you. It's not just me prattling about on about beer. Honest. Anyway, see you in the next one. Next up is um, the East India Porter. 6.3% ABV. In collaboration with uh, a brewery called Dot Beers from Grimsby, uh, which is out on the west coast of, uh, of the north of England. Um, Bowling, Bowline, Bowline, no idea how it's pronounced, but it's based on, it's a, it's a knot, it's, a, it's like a nautical knot. Uh, as, once again, as I said with Tram Shed, we cover this on uh, on Good Beer Live. I really would, I really want you to go and check check our, 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 our reactions to this because we were absolutely blown away by this beer. Um, beer in the glass. I'm, I'm going dark brown. I'm not going black. I'm going dark brown. Now it's kind of like mocha top to it. As far as aroma goes, I'm not going to do one because I, I keep forgetting to do it. If I do it, I do it. All right. In the headroom. I'm going to do. I'm going to judge aroma. Anyway, let's drink some beer. Cheers. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, for me, I mean, I've drunk it twice now since the same time I've drank it, and um, that instant reaction was taking me back to a lot of kind of export porters, uh, export stouts, export porters um, from America. That is, it's, I mean, and it's that kind of weird kind of non-style, which is the American stout, um, which I I love. You I mean as far as the flavour profile goes, it's um, it's bonfire toffee, um, really kind of like bitter chocolate, um, marzipan, cocoa powder, but loads of molasses and maybe a hint of licorice. I don't love licorice, but it's, um, it's not too bad in this form. Espresso, but that kind of, yeah, bonfire toffee, molasses really rules the roost on this one. I think it's a splendid beer. I mean, I think maybe the best this brewery's made so far. Um, yeah, love it, love it, absolutely love it. It's, it's a simple beer, but done beautifully. Mm. Yeah, that kind of tree club bonfire toffee thing, just absolutely lovely. Anyway, see you in the next one. The last beer that I'm gonna be having here at um, Salt Beer Factory is a uh, Half of the ICAT um, um, double IPA, 8% ABV. Um, one of the beers that we actually launched on. I mean, and, you know, probably on the on the launch night was the best beer, but I've, and I've not had it for quite a while actually. I'm really looking forward to this. But you know, if you look at it, it looks like peach pulp. 
not much of a head. But yeah, sort of like it's textbook kind of New England style kind of uh, double IPA. As you can see, the lighting now is a little bit more nighttime. <laughs> it is only like half three, um, but um, it's time of the year, isn't it? Anyway, so let's dive in, cheers. Yeah, it's cracking. Yeah. Yeah, peach, papaya. What else is going on in there? A little bit of pine. Grape, grape, melon to a certain degree. Not kind of like fudgy, not kind of like, if you think of beer, uh, brewers like Verdant who, who go a bit like fudgy, but overtly sweet. This is, once again, as I said, throughout most of these little reviews is balance. Silly drinkability before it's ABV. Um, what's in there? Yeah, it's that grape, grape melon, grapefruit, pineapple, papaya. It's really good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's a cracker. Yeah, so there you go. So that's the end of my little afternoon uh, at Salt Bay Factory. Thanks for tuning in for this longer than usual review. Um, but yeah, I really want to show you this place just down the road uh, from where I live. And um, I think they're just getting better and better. And, I, and the beers I've had today kind of confirm what I thought. Anyway, I'm off from Mobzine. See you next time. Cheers.